Hi Floss Tube. This is Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, and I am coming at you today with a tutorial on finishing my Barn Sweet Barn cross stitch. This is the color conversions for this month, March, and these were the original colors that were part of the chart called Flea Market Baskets. We're just stitching the inner star, and then these are the colors that they recommended, and then I changed 906 to 704 and 16 to 15 um, because that's what I had bought and I thought it looked pretty much the same. So you can see my finished stitch piece. I ended up stitching it on 10 count vintage cloth in the color cloud. I have bought some more of the 11 count from Hobby Lobby that I probably will do my other ones on but I had this and so I went ahead and started stitching it and then I said, well, I'll just finish it, it'll be fine. So what I'm going to be using to finish it today is my piece. I have some sticky board. I have a piece of B cross stitch fabric by Lori Holt and I purchased the um, 10 inch stacker and this is what it looks like. Um, and it has all of the different colors that they are potentially using. And you don't have to use, there's a couple other greens um, in here as well, depending on kind of what you use. There's like a lighter green. But the ribbon that I chose to go on the top matches best with this one, which is a little bit brighter and it's gonna look good with this. Um, I am pretty sure this is the one that that quarter shop used and theirs, um, but it matches with my ribbon better. So that's why I chose this fabric. And I don't know the skew from it. It's just the, it's a little bit of a darker one um, in the B cross stitch. And you can get the 10 inch stacker if you feel confident in covering with just a 10 inch square or um, I know Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, she's using a Fat Quarter bundle. Um, there's the same fabrics in it. This is just a little bit cheaper and I knew that I feel comfortable finishing and covering my board so I was fine with using this. So the other items that you need are you need two pieces of sticky board one for your backing fabric and one for your cross stitch piece. And I've already pre-cut these. This is mine for my stitched piece and it's four and a half by four and a half. And I'm gonna put my actual stitching on this. And then this is for my backing fabric, which is five and a half by five and a half. Um, and I'm gonna put my fabric on here. And I went ahead and pre-cut these um, just using my ruler and my rotary cutter. I like the rotary cutter. I know Priscilla likes from Stitching with the Housewives likes to use a guillotine cutter. I have, this is my rotary cutter that I only use for sticky board and you can see it's pretty gross. Um, but I don't, I do not cut fabric with this one. So I have a lot of rotary cutters and I just kind of designated one as that. So I am going to put batting on my behind my stitched piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my board for my stitch piece. I'm going to take the, this off and I'm gonna stick my batting right on the sticky part. So I have a piece of batting, which I also cut um, four and a half by four and a half. And another thing I did with the batting is that when I made, finished my first piece, I went ahead and cut a couple extras uh, pieces that were four and a half by four and a half, and they're just in with my other houses so that I don't have to cut those every single time. But so I have that. And I like to, when I stick my um, stitching piece on, I like to use this finishing tape from Fat Quarter Shop, and I, of course I don't have a little thing to show you. I believe it's just called finishing tape, um, but it's double-sided tape. Uh, it's acid-free, and I can link it below. Um, but I like to use this 
when I'm sticking my stitching on because then I'm not burning my fingers because the hot glue goes through these holes. So I'm not very <laughs> precise in measuring um, to put this on. What I normally do is I just, you can kind of see actually the um, shadow, but I just lay my cross stitch over top of my sticky board and I kind of make sure it looks even. And then I'm gonna carefully turn my piece over. I'm gonna trim with my rotary cutter that I use to cut fabric. I'm gonna trim my edges so they're a little bit closer because I don't wanna have too much either regular fabric or cross stitch cloth hanging over because then it's too much bulk. So I just carefully um, trim around the edges and I have this lined up. I'm going to take my finishing tape, I'm going to lay it on two sides. And I, I'm doing this very carefully because I do not want my stitched, I don't want my board to be moving a lot so that my stitched piece is getting off centered because I already checked it before. But I will, after I stick these two sides down, I'll just double check that it is um, still lined up. So then I pull this, and I pull this side, then I'm going to flip it over. I'm just going to make sure that it looks straight and it's pretty even. And this, this cloth and the 10 count, I mean, I'm sorry, this is 10 count. The 11 count as well, it's pretty easy to move around, especially if you have um, the batting underneath. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. I'm gonna put the finishing tape again, lay it down. Oops, lay it down. This is when it gets a little tricky to get it off, is when it's on the fabric, because you just want the piece of paper to come up. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my goodness. Only on video does this happen. So then I'm gonna stick my corners down and pull this because I want to make sure my corners are tight. And at the end, I can always stick a piece of tape there to make sure that it's nice and um, square on the corner. And you'll see in a minute, I'll show you. Let's see. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm going to stick my corners down and then I'm going to pull this back. Okay. It actually looks pretty good. You just want to make sure that your corners come to a nice point. Um, over here, I might want to put a little bit of um, tape and I can just simply cut a piece and it also acts as regular tape. I can just kind of pull this and tape it down. So I don't necessarily need it for all the sides, but that side looked a little bit um, like it needed a little bit of help. Still might need a little help. All right, well, that's good enough. So I have my stitched piece batting behind my stitched piece on my four and a half by four and a half inch square. So I'm gonna set that aside 
And then I'm gonna take my five and a half by five and a half inch square. I'm going to take the sticky board off. And for this part, I'm going to use hot glue. So I take my cross B cross stitch fabric, lay it down, and then I'm trying to lay this. There's, if you can see, there's cross stitches across um, the fabric. So I'm trying to lay this carefully so it's somewhat straight. It's not gonna be perfect because I don't think the fabric's exactly perfect. Um, but as long as it's straight enough so your eyes aren't looking funky at the fabric. Then again, I'm going to cut my fabric close, but not too close because on this part, personally, I'm using the hot glue gun. So I don't want there to be too close because then I have more likelihood of burning my um, fingers. If you're using either the finishing tape, which you could stick finishing tape here. And I also have these, these are called the cross stitch finishing dots and they come in the three quarter inch and they also come in a larger size. I do not have the larger size, um, but these are also good. You can stick down and they work the same as the finishing tape and they're sold by Fat Quarter Shop. So I'm going to simply put some glue on two sides. Carefully, I'm gonna glue this down. And another suggestion, I mean, my hot glue gun is a uh, sure bond and it is um, removable. So it has no cord on it. Um, it has a charger. It's is pretty darn hot. So if you want, you could also have a bowl of hot, uh, not hot, that would defeat the purpose. You could have a bowl of cold water sitting next to you in case you were to burn your finger. Um, you could stick your finger or stick your finger, hand, whatever, in the hot, uh, cold water so that you could get the heat off. Um, but I feel like I've burnt my fingers enough. I also bought these. I want to say I bought it from, I don't remember now, but you can put it on your finger and then you can, maybe I bought these at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, you can push it down and it's rubber and you don't burn your finger. But of course I don't have the packaging for that. I can try to look that up though. All right, so I have my fabric and I have my stitched piece and I am simply going to glue my stitched piece to my fabric and I'm just going to center it. I like to put the glue all around the edges and then I like to put an X and just put a little bit more to make sure that it's gonna stay. And then I'm gonna center it as best I can on my fabric. And then I have this piece. So that's my actual stitching. Let me add this back in. So the next part would be to take your stitching in your backing fabric and mount it to your wooden piece or whatever metal piece, whatever type of finishing piece you've chosen. This is, and I'll show you at the end, this is the one that I bought. This is the house from Target. Um, and I've mounted my other pieces on this. So I probably will mount this on here. Let me... Um, so I, um, this is one option, another option, and this is the, um, the, 
item number. It's from the dollar spot. It was three dollars. I picked this up today at Joann's, and I can show you the um, the number. I thought this looked really pretty to put. You could put a uh, either glue it straight on it, or you could put a magnet um, and washers on here, and to remove to put them on each time. You could also even if you wanted to do it this way. Um, but it has a little hanger, and this is what it looked like. It says Park Lane. I did spray paint it, and I'll show you what I used in just a second. This is the tag. And this was a natural wood piece, a square piece, and I spray painted it with um, classic white spray paint, chalky finish, and then I also sprayed over top of it, this clear wood finish when I was done. So that's an option. And you could also still stick a bow at the top if you wanted, which I am gonna stick a bow. Another option would be to take, this is one of the large, I'm trying to show you with my um, tripod. This is one of the large houses from 141 Design Company and I painted it black. Um, but you could stick this with a bow at the top and it fits perfectly. And it even with my sizing, it even fits on, this is the small house and you could either put a bow, no bow. Um, you could put magnet and washer on the back as well. So I wanted to bring a couple other uh, finishing options for you. If you weren't either weren't able to get the house from Target or you didn't care for the house from Target. Another um, option is using the barn from 141. And it finishes looking like this. This is the barn without the silo and you can purchase it from Fat Quarter Shop and from 141 Design Company. And all of these things I will link below. And I'll, I'll try to link the Target things, but I'm not sure about that. So I bought enough houses to mount each stitched piece on um, their own house. So I have 12 houses. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue my piece down. So I'm just going to look because I want to put a bow at the top. So I'm just going to eyeball where it's going on here. And it's about the same as all my other, my, well, oh, my other two houses, January and February. And I am gonna put some glue on here. I am just gonna glue it down. So then I have my house with my stitch piece. Now up here, um, you could stick a wreath or you could put an embellishment if you wanted. I'm going to do a ribbon and I chose to, I'm gonna do a double ribbon. So I have this jean fabric ribbon and this green um, gingham. I'm gonna stick on top of it. And I brought both of them with me. This is the green gingham. And both of these are from Hobby Lobby. And this is the jean ribbon. And both sets of these go on sale for half off at Hobby Lobby. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm, I already cut them and I just kind of cut them for what I thought would be the right length. So I'm going to lay my ribbon like so. And then I'm gonna take my green ribbon. And I'm gonna fold it the same way to about where I think I want my, actually, I think I want it to be a little bit smaller. I kind of pull it and make sure that it looks about right. And honestly, I, this, there is no, I don't, I just kind of eyeball it. 
And then I have over here this ball of twine, which is what I tie the middle of my ribbons with. So I have a giant thing. So I just take them together, turn it over, and I'm gonna tie this in a knot. And this is just to get them together. Then I have them tied together. I can pull, normally I can't. <laughs> I can pull the ribbon tighter, looser, um, kind of manipulate it to get it to how I want it to look. And I think I wanna tie this a little tighter. And then when you're done and you get to the next part when we glue the ribbon on, you can either leave it with the twine in the middle. That's why I like to use the twine. If we, if we can even, I think I'm gonna wrap a couple more pieces around. Um, or, and I'll show you my January, which I just have this on there as well. I just wrap some twine around. Or you can also put a covered button or you could put an embellishment um, in the middle where you tied it together. So it's completely up to you, but this gives you a way to not have to put an embellishment such as a covered button or something. Um, you can just leave it with the twine tied on there. So I'm going to, I'm almost done. Trim this off. I just wanna make sure that they're pretty even. So then I'm gonna bring my stitched piece back over. And I'm gonna look here. And then I'm gonna trim my edges. And I wanna trim the back, if you're doing a double bow, you want the back bow to be longer, the piece that hangs off, you want the back bow to be a little bit longer than the front bow so that it sticks through, or I'm sorry, it sticks out at the end. Like that. I like how that looks. So I am going to I could sit here and mess with the bow for hours. <laughs> as I'm sure many of you could as well. I'm gonna stick some glue down just kind of in the center and stick my bow on. And then once I get the bow on as well, I can kind of Again, manipulate it. And both of these ribbon have wire, which I like to use wire ribbon the best because you can move it around and get it exactly how you want it um, with that. So here is my finished piece. You can see with my ribbon. And then I will also show you, this is my January one. And this one I used 11 count white fabric from Hobby Lobby. I've used the um, Rick Rack Lori Holt large trim Rick Rack in cloud along, along the sides. And I was talking about this in my um, other floss tube. This is my little notebook with my notes in it. So I knew when I went to finish today that my cross stitch board needed to be four and a half by four and a half with the batting. And these were my backing. For my January one, I cut my backing six, six inches by six inches. I was not really sure exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, so I was kind of playing with the sizes. But then for February, I decided that I wanted to change it to five and a half by five and a half. 
So you'll see when I show the next one that my backing fabric is a little bit smaller. But I made a note, so I remembered. And then this is my February. I have a bow with a covered button in the same fabric, which is the B cross stitch. Um, this one I used 10 count Daisy Vintage Cloth, and I used um, Silk Floss from the NPI Silk Club at Fat Quarter Shop. The B cross stitch on the back as well. And this backing piece of fabric was five and a half by five and a half. And then again, here is my March. And I'll add um, the March one to my photo with my other two. And I will post that to my Instagram along with attaching the links to as many of the finishing items as I can find below the video. I hope that you enjoyed my finishing tutorial today and I hope you join me later this week for floss tube number three. Thank you so much. Have a great day.